Hi everyone! Welcome to the Physics Engine homework video, where I'll be explaining everything that you need to know to do Physics Engine. The purpose of Physics Engine The Physics Engine Jumper Code is a jumper game where you can play as a red or blue square and jump around on platforms. The Physics Engine is the backbone of the game, in which the movement and collisions of the object are made. For this homework, you'll be given a starter code. Look through the starter code and familiarize yourself with it. Throughout this project, it's highly recommended to use the GUI to help debug your methods, as well as play the game. To display the GUI, run the Jumper App object. Keep in mind, if you make changes to your code, you have to rerun the GUI to see how those changes have affected your code. Always rerun. So, what is this physics engine jumper world? It's a 3D world with dimensions X, Y, and Z. Since your screen is 2D, you won't be able to see the Y axis. The Z axis is parallel to the left and right sides of your laptop. The X axis is parallel to the top and bottom of your laptop. Meanwhile, the Y axis is pointing out towards you. There is a constant acceleration due to gravity in the negative z direction. Negative z is down, positive z is up, and the ground is at the plate z equals zero. But we'll get to that in detail later, and it is specified in your assignment sheet. So let's look at our world. So we run the jumper app to actually see the world, and at the bottom here, we see a blue square and a red square. These are our dynamic objects. The horizontal black lines are platforms, while the vertical black line is the wall. The platforms and walls are basically static objects. At the end of the video, there will be a demo of the finished game that you can play with a friend. Oh no, 3D graphs sound scary. To help understand 3D graphs, let's start with a 2D graph. In this image, we have the x and z axis. The origin is when x equals 0 and z equals 0, so at the point 0, 0. And here we have a 2D square. The location of the square is at the smallest value of each dimension. In this example, the location of this square is at the origin 0, 0. The dimensions of the square are the lengths of the sides. So if you have a 2D square, with a location of 0, 0 and dimension of 3, 4, the corners of the square would be 0, 0, 0, 4, 3, 0, and 3, 4. Although my drawing is not drawn to scale. Keep that in mind, please. Now let's move on to a 3D graph. The origin is when x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 0, hence at the point 0, 0, 0. Here we now have a 3D cube. Similar to the 2D square, the location of the cube is at the smallest value of each dimension. In this case, the location is at the origin 0, 0, 0. The dimensions of the cube, just like the square, are the lengths of the sides. So, if you have a 3D cube at the location 0, 0, 0, and with a dimension of 3, 4, 5, the corners of the cube would be 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 5, 0, 4, 5, 3, 4, 0, 3, 0, 5, and 3, 4, 5. Again, my drawing is not to scale, so remember that. So a brief introduction to physics vectors. In this assignment and in many other assignments, we will be using physics vectors. And don't worry, they're not as scary as they sound. When you take a look at the physics vector class, you'll see that there are three arguments in the parameter x, y, and z. We can use physics vectors to save our information for a game object. 
such as saving the dimensions, the locations, and the velocities of the game object. So, objective one. In this objective, you'll be detecting if two objects are collided. In other words, if they're overlapping. The parameters of the isLocation method will contain two game objects. These can be players, platforms, or walls. Through these objects, you can access their dimensions, locations, and velocities. Please make sure to read through the code to find out how to do this. The method must return a Boolean value stating if the game objects have collided or not. Return true if they've collided. To clarify, a collision means that the two game objects are overlapping, not just touching. The jumper game needs to identify collisions so it can then decide what needs to happen when a player collides with a platform or wall. For example, when a player is falling and lands on the platform, Jumper needs to identify that the player has collided with the platform and update the location and velocity of the player. So, objective two. In objective two, you will be updating the object's velocities and locations. The goal of this objective is to provide movement to the players. In Lab Activity 2 or 3, I believe, you'll have been given an introduction to this objective when you're asked to implement a movement to one of the players. Use this as a starting point to expand on the code according to the guidelines on the assignment. Physics vectors. Let's talk more about velocity. When we're on a road trip, the speedometer tells us what velocity we're traveling at assuming that we're not going backwards. Oh, we're going 20 miles per hour? Cool, but which direction? This is where velocity vectors come in. Just so you know, this is a vector is a vector. Vectors tell us the velocity for each direction that we are going to. So, for example, let's take the velocity vector v equals three, four, five. And let's say that we're measuring in meters per second. This means that the object that has this vector is traveling 3 meters per second on the x-axis, 4 meters per second on the y-axis, and 5 meters per second on the z-axis. Great, so we know what all of this means by now, but how do we update the object's location by advancing the position based on the velocity? Do we need to use physics and calc? Um, no. The time interval that's being passed in the parameter is small enough that we will have an accurate enough simulation of physics. We're going to be using a linear equation to calculate the new locations of the objects. So let's review algebra. A linear equation looks something like this. y equals mx plus b. In our case, though, y is the object's new location m is the object's velocity, x is the time elapsed, and b is the object's old location. So, new location is equal to velocity times time plus the old location. So it's time for another example. Let's use the same velocity vector that we had before. v equals three, four, five. Now, let's say that we have a location vector of 1, 1, 1, and the time elapsed that is being passed to us is 2. Let's first find the object's new x location. So, we know that the velocity of x is 3, the time elapsed is 2, and the old location of x is 1. So we plug these values into the equation. New location of x equals velocity of x times time elapsed plus old location of x, and that will give us the new location of x is equal to 7. Now you have the new x location of the object and can update the object. Objective 3. In this objective, you'll be checking that the static object and the dynamic object have collided. 
by calling the is collision method. And if they have, then calling the collide with static object and collide with dynamic object methods as specified in the assignment sheet. To call the collide with dynamic object method, you'll need to determine which face of the static object was hit. You may assume that only one face collision occurs during an update. If the collision occurs near an edge or corner, computing the correct face is more difficult, so you're not required to take into account these cases. Specifically, you may assume that the previous location overlaps with the static object in at least two dimensions. In other words, if at an update a collision occurs at a new location, then at the previous location at least two dimensions are already overlapping between the dynamic and static objects. If the objects were already colliding, based on the dynamic object's previous location, the colliding face should be internal. So here's an image of the face object. Make sure that you go through this, read it, and um, understand how to use it. This objective is crucial in platform games. The dynamic objects are the players that you can move around on the screen, but the platforms are actually static objects which interact with the players. Internal face collisions are necessary so that a platform is able to let a player pass through it when they are jumping up. Otherwise, a player will get stuck between platforms. The rest of the collisions are needed to prevent the player from falling off the screen by having them land on top of the platform. So, determining which face of the static object is collided with is the key to platform games. The primary objective. The primary objective is the most important method in creating a game. Here we need to actually update our world. We're basically creating time for our world in this objective by updating all the dynamic objects as well as checking collisions for each dynamic object with static object. Here's a helpful hint. You can do the primary objective early. The primary objective is useful in helping debug code in objectives two and three, and it's highly recommended that you complete the primary objective before or as you're doing objectives two and three, so you can see the changes you make as you code. It's a lot easier to debug when you can actually see what you're doing. So now it'll be time for a demo. After finishing all the objectives, we can finally play our game. So here I've run the GUI, and here are our blue and red players. The blue player moves by pressing the WASD keys, while the red player moves by pressing the arrow keys. So today I'm going to play as the red player. With the finished game, I am able to fully move around. And I can pass through platforms while going up, and land on platforms when going down. When a player falls below the edge of the screen, IntelliJ will print that the player has fallen into the terminal. So here I am moving around and I'm going to let this player die eventually. So here it's landed on the platform, collided with the wall, pass through the wall. And player two is dead. Remember to fully test your code to make sure it works. Don't just submit it to Autograder and hope that you'll get points. Don't make 200 submissions just for one homework. That's not going to do you any good, and it's a little bit ridiculous. Just don't do it. Just test your code so you can actually also understand what you're doing and where your bugs are and all of that stuff. Come into office hours early. We love you. We want to see you. Just please 
don't all of you show up on the last office hour of Friday and try to get help because we're going to have only one or two TAs there and they're probably not going to get to all of you and it'll suck. So please don't do it. Come in ahead of time. My office hours are Tuesdays, Thursdays, 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 3, I believe. And you can find the full office hour sheet on the course website. So just come in early. If you have any questions, ask them on Piazza. Just don't wait until the last minute. Also, don't cheat. Um, don't share your code with people. Don't let other people look at your code. Don't look at other people's code. Um, if you research stuff on the internet, that's fine. Just put the links where you got everything into your code um, as a comment and it's fine. And you'll be able to go back and look at it later and it's saved. And last of all, have fun with this project. It's a great game. It's fun to play and you can play with two people. Lots of fun to code. So good luck guys and I hope to see you all in office hours.